In the previous lesson, we finished up by writing the most basic of assertions. So when I am on the home page, then I expect to see the text welcome within an H1 tag. Let's now take a look at some other matchers, more specifically for working with forms, because this will be very common. For example, if you need some kind of test to ensure that you can log in, well, then you need some way to fill out a form, and Codeception can do this really easily. So let's remove this last line, and we'll say when we're on the home page, we are going to say I fill field, and we'll say username with John Doe. And then we'll do the same thing, but for password, and we'll just say one, two, three, four. And then finally, we're going to click the submit button. All right, so this has introduced two new methods. And once again, I don't even really need to explain these to you because you understand exactly what they're doing. So when we fill out the username input with John Doe and the password input with 1234, then we click submit. What do we expect to have happen at that point? Well, behind the scenes, there would probably be some authentication to make sure that you're valid. In this case, though, we're not even going to do anything with the code. We're simply going to redirect the user to a new page that shows them their username, just to give us a demonstration for how to use some of these methods. So how could we say, well, at that point, we expect to be on the admin page? Well, we could say, I, not am on page. This is something I would have thought initially. But this is more a, a starter for your assertion. So here we're saying, all right, beginning on this page. Here, if we say I am on page admin, that's going to reset things. Really what we want is I see current URL equals. That's a better choice. And in this case, we expect it to equal slash admin. All right, let's try this out. Let's assign an alias T to codecept run acceptance. And now I will just type T and we have our first step. So it's trying to fill out a form field, but you don't have a form, so it can't work. All right, let's get started on that right now. We're going to open up our index.php file, and let's get rid of that and simply open up a new form. And within here, let's add an input tag that will be a type of text, a name of username, and an ID of username. There we go. If we now run it again, oop, looks like we're going to get some kind of error. Couldn't verify that the home page welcomes me. Well, we would want to rename that too, wouldn't we? But let's leave it like that for now. This is confusing, but if you read it, you'll just see exception thrown because the form submit button for the field was not found. So all we need to do is add on the submit button. Button type equals submit, and we'll say submit. All right, let's try it one more time. And there we go. So now it's successfully filled out the username, but now we need to do the exact same thing for the password. So let's change that right now. One more time. And great, so we filled out the form, we click submit, but then, because we didn't set an action, we expected the page to be slash admin, but it's still index.php. So let's say method equals, we'll just use get in this case, even though that's terrible for a login form. We're not going to do anything with the data. And the action is going to be admin.php. And I'll leave a quick little note here just to emphasize this. Never get for login submission. All right, so now we run it again, and it's still failing, but now we have a little bit more feedback. We can see, all right, we expected slash admin, but because we ran a get request, it's appending the query string on there. So those two don't match. So you have a couple choices. One of them would be just change that to post, run it, and at this point, the two match. We just forgot to add on the .php. So if I try it again, now we're at green. But this is a good example. Let's return it to get. And what do we do in those situations where you want to make sure it matches to an extent, but we don't want to have to specify that entire query string? How could you do that? Well, you could change this to, instead of I see current URL equals, we could instead write, and you know what, before we do that, let me just show you how you could go about finding these yourself. You could refer to the documentation, or you could take a look at WebGuy. And remember, I noted that this file is generated dynamically based on the modules that have been set. In this case, we're just using the default modules. So for example, a PHP browser to allow us to run these acceptance tests without having to open the browser. Now, if we do a quick search for the methods, we'll see C. Notice there's C page not found. I see link. I see response code. Let's look at C current URL. 
So we have a couple of them. We have C in current URL, C current URL equals, that's to be explicit, and C current URL matches when you want to use a regular expression. So it looks like in our case what we want is C in current URL. So let's remove that and one more time open up our test. I C in current URL and this time we're going to look for admin.php. All right, we're going to run it one more time, and it passes. Excellent. So the only difference between these two is this is being explicit. It's going to make sure that those two values equal, and this one's just going to make sure that the full actual value at least contains admin.php. And you'll notice if I change this to, for example, x, and we run it, it's going to fail and let you know exactly where the error occurred. Now, what if we wanted to do one more thing? What if we also want to say, all right, well, I expect to be redirected to admin.php, and then I expect to see the value that I entered. Maybe we want to say, I see, welcome, John Doe. We're going to say, welcome to the username, and I want that to be stored within an H1, or you could leave that blank if you don't want to accept the tag that it has to be nested within. So we run it again, and now it's getting as close as it can, but it's letting you know, hey, I didn't see John Doe. That's your next step. And this is the fun part. You get a series of steps, so it's like a game. What do I do next? Run the test, and it'll let you know. So we just need to, I'll create a split pane here, and let's create a new admin.php, just because we're using raw PHP here. In real life, you'd likely be using a framework like Symfony or Laravel. But anyhow, let's say, we'll just do this with simple PHP here. We're going to echo welcome and then get username. And of course, because this is raw PHP, we would want to do something like HTML special chars. Now, if we run it again, it looks like it's going to fail, but that's only because we did not nest it within an H1 tag. So if we remove that and run it again, we're back to passing. Great, so we introduced a handful of new methods in this lesson. You learned a big one, how to fill out forms, so how to use fill field. Now for other things where you're not actually entering text, maybe you want to select an option. Well then, guess what? The method is going to be called select option. I select option. Very cool. Next, you learned how to click buttons. Now this is going to be true for links as well. You can say I click submit, or I click and then a link. This is another thing you can do. You can pass a CSS selector. So you could say home A or something like that, and that will select the link that's within an element with a class of home. Speaking of which, on that note, you can also do things like I see link. So for example, when we go to the home page, then we expect to see a link that says log in. Or maybe once you log in, you expect to see a link that says log out. All of that stuff is going to be available to you. Anyhow, so we learned how to fill out form fields. We learned how to submit the form. Now, if there's ever a situation where you want to submit a form without having to go through the process of filling out each field, you could also do I submit form, the ID of the form, and then you could pass an array that will make up the form fields. So username, John Doe. Now with this technique, it can be good in situations when maybe the form is malformed, but I'd say be a little careful with this just because you're not following the user's actions as much as you might. You're just submitting a form and passing it some data while ignoring the form fields. But nonetheless, it's an option if you need to, and that would allow you to get rid of this section, this section, and it will also submit the form for you. So we learned how to click buttons. We learned how to search for a URL so we can make sure that a URL equals or contains a specific value. And then of course, you've already learned how to use the C method. All right, play around with these and then move on to the next video.